Welcome to the first instalment in a regular series of quick tips in which we'll explain in a couple of minutes how to use Rail Clone's macros and forest packs effects. To get started, we'll look at a couple of macros in Rail Clone that can be used to get more out of your assets by randomizing rotation and mirroring segments to help disguise repeated geometries and textures. For example, in this scene, I have a single tile which is wired to a simple A2S array to create a concrete paving style. As you can see though, the repetition of the segments is obvious. One way to help disguise this repetition is by randomly mirroring the geometry on the X and the Y axis. To do this, you can use a built-in macro. Just go to the Macros tab on the right of the Style Editor and find the Transform group. Drag a Mirror Variations macro to the graph and wire it between the existing segment and the generator. Select the macro and in the Properties panel you'll see options to control which axes are used for the random mirroring operation. In this example, we'll enable the X and the Y axis and leave Z unchecked. And already, the repetition is much less obvious. Another option to add variation to our single tile is to randomly rotate the segments in 90 degree increments. To do this, we'll temporarily disconnect the mirror variations macro and instead wire a new stepped rotation macro between the segment and the generator. Select the new macro and go to the properties panel. Here you'll find a minimum, maximum and step increment parameter for each axis. To rotate the tiles, leave the Z minimum value to zero change the Z maximum to 360 to allow for a full rotation and then change the Z step value to 90. This combination will randomly output rotation values of 0, 90, 180, 270 and 360 degrees. Of course though for other purposes different step, min and max values can be used. So with this complete you can see we have a slightly different way of randomizing the segments to disguise repetition. But for maximum variation you should combine both these macros in series by wiring the output of one to the input of the other. So as you can see, these macros are very useful for getting the most from just a few assets, but you could go even further by adding a rail clone color map to the materials diffuse input and using it to randomize the value. So to do this, you would open the material editor, find or pick the material applied to the rail clone object, Wire a new Rail Clone color material between the existing diffuse map and the material. For compatibility with the widest range of renderers, just make sure you also wire the diffuse map to the map1 input and enable it. Then enable tint and change the gradient from white at one end to black at the other. Then change the blending mode to multiply. A random value picked from the gradient will now be used to multiply the values of the diffuse texture. You can control the strength of this effect using the random strength minimum and maximum values. 0 to 30% works well in this case. And now if you render, you'll see that the subtle changes in value combined with the macros really help to disguise the fact that this is still only a single model. The material applied to this object actually includes four additional tile textures on material IDs 2 to 5. So to really add some variety, we can randomize between these in Rail Clone 2. Just open the style editor and add a new material node after the segment. In the node settings, change replace material ID to target the ID you wish to randomize. In this example, we'll leave it at one. You can then enter a from and a to value to define the range from which a random material ID will be selected. There are five materials, so change from to one and two to five. Now, if you render the tiles, they're randomized by mirroring, rotating, tinting, and applying one of five different materials. I hope that helps and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Stay tuned for more videos coming very soon explaining how to use Rail Clone and Forest Pack's built-in macros and effects.